Basically, we were on, I was on your show this summer. We talked about energy, and energy was getting demolished this summer while tech stocks were red hot. And we've really seen a nice rotation over this rally here. I mean, energy stocks have definitely come alive. And it just speaks to what I see is that reopening trade. And you know, tech really hasn't done that much since the end of the summer. I mean, the only FANG stock that's near its all-time high right now is Google. In the meantime, you've got energy stocks going up, you have financials, you have good old-fashioned value stocks. So this has really been the reopening trade rally that we've had over the last couple of weeks, which is pretty awesome. And you and I were talking about that literally back in August. Yeah, we were. And and listen, Ryan, you, there's no doubt, there's no, there's no question why there's optimism now. The vaccines, the treatments, we can see the end, everyone's ready to bust out. The only question I would have is, have we gone too far over our skis? The valuations in some cases can be hard to justify, maybe for small cap value. They're easier to justify. Where do you see any kind of valuation gap? Yeah, I mean, the valuation gaps are huge right now. And I think that's one of the best opportunities you have as an investor, because let's face it, tech growth trades at 30 times forward earnings. That's not cheap by any historical measure. And just so much good news has been baked into those stocks this year, Brian. And meanwhile, you look at value stocks, which just went even for the year yesterday, by the way, are trading at 15 times forward earnings. So, you know, when you look at just the hurdles next year from an earnings perspective that like small caps are another great example, it's just a lower hurdle they have to beat expectations. Whereas if I'm a big large cap tech company right now, you know, where do you go from here? How do you beat those expectations that have been baked in so far this year? And I think it's going to be really hard for tech to keep outperforming. And it speaks to it's so important right now to diversify your money. And also you can look overseas yeah, as and well. Maybe, and maybe, so Ryan, stupid. yeah, okay. You know what? You read my mind or maybe I read your notes because you talked about overseas. I know we're myopic in the American news media. I get that, okay? I've traveled all over the world, but we forget 96% of human beings do not live in the United States. Is there opportunity you're seeing in emerging markets that are maybe better values than our market right now? Absolutely. So when you talk about value, I mean, value is even cheaper overseas. Emerging markets specifically right now, I mean, they're barely trailing the U.S. markets, the S&P and the emerging markets are pretty much neck and neck in performance this year. But again, the multiple is just so much cheaper overseas. And you just look at markets and market penetration, like you just said, you know, 90% plus of the populations outside of the U.S. So is 85% of the economic activity. So like if you look at India, for instance, mortgage penetration is like 10% of GDP, where it's like 60 to 70% in the U.S. So those markets just, just have so much more runway. And on top of it, you've got a weakening dollar, which is just like an extra kicker to your performance over time. So not having a global portfolio at this point is just like you're going to miss the boat over the next five to 10 years, Brian. You've got to have international in your portfolio. You've got to have those emerging markets.